Hello and welcome to Two by Tuesday. This week, I'm tackling the question, how do you get time with someone who has no time? Now, uh, even with that question, I want to challenge it because we always have, it's, it's always time. It's all a matter of priority and I think you might have heard that before. What really um, reminds me of that is Wordle. All of these people on Twitter that I know are insanely busy people and myself, like I've got a never ending to-do list Yet there's always time in my day to do a Wordle because it is a priority to me. So in this example, I'm going to map what it takes to get a meeting with someone who has no time to get that time in their calendar. When I was thinking about this question, I thought of two things that are actually really important when it comes to getting time. And on the y-axis, I'm going to put the word interest. Interest. And then on the x-axis is uh, your relationship to this person. Okay, so relationship is on the x-axis, on the y-axis is interest. So on the y up the top here, we have the, in their interest, right? So their interest, W-I-I-F-M, what's in it for them, what's in it for me. And down the bottom is self-interest. So is the meeting that you're initiating, is it in your self-interest or in their interest? We'll talk more about definitions and, and uh, how you can create it in their interest. And then in relationships, I think uh, this is quite obvious. Are you known to them or are you unknown, right? So known is on the far right and unknown to the left. Okay, let's map this out. We have our four quadrants moving. So up the top here, I think top right is again, just the place of ambition. If you're known to them and this meeting is really about, it's really in their best interest to catch up with you. Uh, that's probably the easiest option. So I'm going to actually map these from ease of access from one through to four, one being the easiest. Two and three were really difficult for me to determine. I think there's some context that plays into it. However, I'm going to actually and say this, if you are unknown to them, but you've really pitched in their self-interest, I think that's actually number two. There might be a greater chance that you'll get that time with them. Three, again, this was very close to and three is if you're known to them, but it's in your self-interest to meet with them more than their interests. I think that's number three. And number four is if you're unknown to them and it's in your self-interest, that makes it really tough to, to get time. So what am I labeling these quadrants? Uh, top right, number one, uh, I would say lock it in. You, you get the time it's locked in. Number two, this is where they have the interest for them to do, to meet up with you, it's in their self-interest, um, even though you're an unknown quantity, um, because they're curious, tell me more. And I'll provide examples in a moment. Bottom right here, we have, they're known to you, but it's in your self-interest. So it seems like a favor, right? So they're doing you a favor to catch up. And bottom left is uh, a bit of a lottery. I mean, if you get a meeting, all the best, but you really need to either ramp up one or the other side to get that. All right, let's, here we go. Lock it in. Curious, tell me more. I'll do this as a favor. Boy, this is lottery. <laughs> we'll see. see what happens. Lock it in. I think I don't need to explore any more about that. You've, uh, you know them and it's in their interests. Let's talk about interests a bit more. Anything you try, uh, if you try to convince someone of, of doing something, it's really hard to do if you do it from your own uh, from your own way of thinking, you've really got to think about what is in their interest. So the reason I think um, for me with podcasting, I ended up getting a lot of conversations with people um, on my previous podcast and now this new podcast interviews that will be coming out because I'm giving them a platform. Their interest is that they'll get their message exposed to more people as a result of having a conversation, right? So it's in their self-interest to do that as opposed to me saying, hey, let's just jump in, let's have a virtual coffee, which they might have like hundreds of those invitations. If you say, let's record this for a podcast, you're, they're more inclined to do that. But their interest doesn't have to be all about like uh, how many people are listening and all of that as well. It could be more about, oh, cool, I'm actually interested in meeting uh, interesting people around the world and, oh, I'm curious about what you do. So it's not all about the, the rational side of it. What kind of experience can you offer? One example that I'm reminded of uh, was, and I can't remember the specifics, but I will retell the story Re related to number two. I'm curious, tell me more. This is when you're unknown to them um, and you're appealing to their self-interest. It was on the Jordan Harbinger show and he was sharing how one of his clients ended up getting a, a meeting with someone at a conference. Again, I don't know the specific details, but 
this guy um, <clears throat> was trying to meet up with one of the speakers and he went onto his LinkedIn profile and discovered the speaker enjoyed playing squash. So what he did was he reached out to the speaker and said, hey, I know you're traveling to my hometown. You probably want to play a game of squash when you're here. I'll, I'll play with you or I'll show you the squash courts or whatever. I can't remember exactly what it was, but he ended up getting like one-on-one -on -one time playing squash with this famous speaker just by finding out a bit more about uh, that speaker's self-interest. So it doesn't have to be all about, oh, the platform you're on or like what, you, what you've done in your life or anything like that. It's, it's appealing to what does this person like as, as a human and that can be things outside of work. So my first time facilitate a podcast, some of the stuff that I, I mean, I'm not saying this is an ask <laughs> at, by any means, but you know, I share that I love long lunches and, and drinking cocktails by the water and that type of thing and talking to cool people. So that is in my self-interest. If you can offer that, that's amazing. But everyone has their own ideas of what that would look like. So it's up to you when you're trying to figure out who you can connect with. It's just trying to really dig in and it doesn't really take a lot. It could just be looking at a LinkedIn profile, it could be reading their books or listening to their articles or anything like that and just getting a sense of what that is. And if they're a colleague as well, just think about like, what do they do for exercise? Like, do they enjoy dogs? I don't know. What is it that could potentially give you the leverage to get time with that person? So it's really, again, seeing people as sort of beyond who they are in with their career and what are they like as humans. And if you can connect over that in some way and appeal to that self-interest, you definitely are in much more so than if you are asking them a request based on what you want. In The Seven Habits, Kobe talks about relationships being like bank accounts. And of course, that sounds very transactional where you're depositing, depositing to withdraw. And I don't like, I don't love the analogy, but there is an element of truth to it. And so in, in this time, like time itself is such a precious resource, right? Let's talk about number three um, as a favor. You can definitely use this and, and ask this, particularly if you've got strong relationships with people, you're known to them, you've invested in, your, in the context of your relationship will really be dependent on this. If we've got strong relationships, you can rely on people, uh, there's, you know, just being very generous with their time and things like that. At the same time, we're talking about how easy is it to get time in that person's calendar? And I would say it's Yes, if you've got a strong relationship and you've got something in their self-interest, it's going to be a lot easier. And look, honestly, their self-interest might be because they like hanging out with you so much that it's a joy for them to jump on a call with you or to grab a coffee with you, right? So that's when you have like that strong peer-to-peer -peer relationship. They get value from hanging out with you. And I don't really want to talk about it as a value add, um, but this is because it's two by two by the nature of it. It is a little bit transactional when we try and distill a question like this into, into these four elements. And the fourth one is it's a lottery. So I think in that instance, if it is a lottery, you don't know this person, uh, a couple of things you can do, you can take either axis, right? So the first one is how could you become known to that person through an introduction by someone that they already know, like, and trust? So is there anyone within like the second network that could introduce you and refer you over? Or can you think about like what, who they are, what they like, and then go through the interest as well. And as Jordan Harbinger says, and he's the reason I've referred to him a bit in this episode is because he always talks about digging the well before you get thirsty. So before asking for their time, what can you offer? What can you share with them? So they know you, then they like you because you're being of service and helpful before you ask for something. So there's the four elements. We've got uh, how do you get time in someone's calendar when they have no time? Two elements, interests, always appeal to their self-interest. So try and cast what you want aside. It's still important, but even more important is what they might be after. And then the second one is the relationship, the context of how connected are you to that person already? Are you known to them? Do you have a strong brand with them, a great relationship? Are you an unknown commodity? Not even on their radar yet. And the four different elements, number one, lock it in. Two, curious, tell me more. Three, okay, this is a favor. Let's do this. And four, mm, it's a bit of a lottery. Hope this helps. Look forward to chatting to you next time.